Hi, welcome everyone. So in today's video, I'll be teaching on how you would, how you can create your own custom function in Excel. Now you may need to do this if you have a lot of complex function, complex formulas going about in a specific calculation and you want to make it easy, more readable that anybody that just picks up your workbook can understand what is going on. So that's why you may probably need to create a custom function. Now for you to do this, there are just few building blocks to, for you to know. Now, before I go into the building block, let me just, I'm just going to be demoing it with a simple example. And by knowing the process of a simple example, you can go ahead to build it out for a more complex use case scenario, dependent on what you want to do. Now, for this example, I have these three numbers, eight, six, and four. Now, if I want to have a situation where I sum up the first two numbers, eight and six, and I'll divide them by four, right? I could do it, yes, in an Excel calculation, I could probably do equals to this plus this, right? If I divide by four, would it give me the correct answer? Well, I have to follow uh, mathematical equations, keep this in a bracket, for example, then divide it by this last number which works is quite fast and easy to do. Remember, I'm just showing a simple scenario, right? It, maybe for your own scenario, doing this may be a whole lot, a lot faster, right? So, but I've already created a custom function. I called it Joseph division, where I just need to specify what the first number is, the second number is, and the third number, what the third number is. Just close my brackets, and I get the same answer, which we got by doing the method. Now, how can we go about creating this our own custom function? Very, it's very easy and straightforward to do. I'll be doing this on sheet two because I've already defined the function on that sheet already. So first of all, I have three, these three cells. Let me just call this one, two, or three, two, and one. I have this three cells, three, two, and, uh, okay, let me make this three, four, and two, or three, five, and two, yeah. I'm just giving an example. It doesn't really matter what the values are there. Uh, so I just want the divisions to be easily readable. So that's what I want. So now I need to, define. I want to divide this, add these two values and divide them by the last value, right? So for us to do this, first of all, we need to combine three things for you to create your custom function. Remember, this is a simple scenario. You, I, I don't think you may really need to do this for simple scenario, but when you need to do complex calculations, maybe like calculating royalties if you're in accounting or calculating some intricate things that will probably require you to do, um, to write a lot of functions or formula, this approach could make it a lot easier and it could also speed up your speed up your Excel workbook if you try this approach. Now, for this, I'll just define, I'll be using a let. A let is a function that allows us to declare and define a variable in a formula. Now, if you are not aware of what variable means, variable is just simply a place that stores your codes or your stores your formula or stores a certain value. So it's just a it's just a, um, a place, like I said, that just stores it. Now, for the first thing, the let functions ask for specific things. It asks for a name, what would be the name of the first value, for example, then what is the value? That's what the let function asks. And you can see the same logic applies going forward, but the let function now stops with a calculation. So at the end of your let function, you must have a calculation at it. If you don't know how a function works in Excel, you can just easily press Ctrl A. It shows the function dialog box and it explains the function for you nice and easily in Excel. So just like I said, assigns calculation results to names useful for storing intermediate calculation and values by defining names inside a formula. So first of all, I'm going to declare let's the first one i'm going to call this is the first value will be i'll just call it first b 
be. You can type in whatever you want the first value to be. Now I'll specify this cell to be the first value. Now you, for your own use case, now probably you have a number somewhere or something that you want to always be like the first value or something or the first variable you can define it in your function. I'm just using a simple scenario so that we can get it clear. Then comma, the second value, the same logic we did. Second, V. I'm using V because there's actually a function called second in Excel. So you don't want to confuse the two. So I'll comma, so I'll declare this as a second value. Then the, the next value I need to declare is the last value. I can call it third V. Then comma, the third value will be this last two as the third value. Right. The moment I've done this, the let the let function always asks for a name, the value, and the calculation. So the end result of your let function should be a calculation. Now, what will be the calculation I want to do? It's just that same simple calculation I did that I'm adding the two numbers and dividing it by the third number. Now, now I'm going to add the two numbers which I'll call first. V, I can reference it in the function once I've declared it in a variable. And second, V, I can click on it. Keep it in brackets, just remember. Then divide it by third V. Third V. Now it's important to know if you want your, form, your uh, formula to be a little bit readable, um, Maybe you want it to be the vertical format. You can press Alt, enter at specific sections of your formula. It gives you like a line break. So you can also give an explanation if you need to, to whoever that is reading the formula as well. So the moment I do this, I can close my bracket and hit enter. Now we get the result as four. Now this is the first part of the video. So using let's, We've seen how we can use let to first declare the calculation we want. Now, the second part of the video, we're going to be using Lambda to create this new function for us. Please stay tuned and do not forget to hit a like as well.